10, 9, ignition sequence start, 6. Hello and welcome to Rocket Fuel, your daily update of everything that's happening in the Rocket Pool community. My name is Wack. Today is January 22nd and we have a jam-packed episode for you all that's full of stuff that's not so good. So let's get started right here. So B Joe, B Joe, um yesterday at um 125 Eastern time said roughly 10 minutes ago, my execution client Geth claimed to have received a bad block at um, 19056922 spitting out a lot of debug info and continuing on since then my consistent client and validators have been chugging along and producing attestations as normal but with the complaint from consensus client lighthouse that blocks now point to a previously rejected block anyone else see something odd happening or is it just my machine so here then dago duck says uh, i am and um, Isaac says, same issue happening here. Halulilo says, I ho oh, oh, hope Geth didn't be sue itself. Um, and then Isaac says, never mind, error while, um, whilst the recomputing head. And then um, here, um, Lee says, just check mine, it doesn't look happy either. Never mind, Nimbus. So um, it seems like there was, like right away, people started seeing an issue with um nimbus but nobody really knew what the issue was or if it was geth or if it was something else and then the chaos his node was down he said something bad is happening isaac said are we losing finality um and then we got some like a screenshot so it says um isaac says about a quarter of the blocks being proposed are being missed there wasn't quite a quarter um as you can see here look before there were any issues um finality was coming through at 99.73 percent and then went down to 96.4 percent then went down again to uh, 92.4 percent and then down again uh, in the next epoch next block sorry to 88 percent and then 85 percent so there was there was a big chunk of um of um blocks not getting uh, attested properly seen properly um there was some issues going on there so patches said oh shit man um, and he said that he's seen participation dropping as well. So here, uh, you know, the, the rate went down considerably. Um, so people were trying to figure out what's going on. Um, Patches says it looks like the rescue knows it is not impacted. Um, and it, um, Blacklaw says, for me, never mind, it's fine, but Lighthouse is reboot looping. So people weren't sure what was going on, what wasn't going on. This was all happening really quickly. But very quickly, um, yeah, it turns out that you know people the the common phrase was never mind um and people started jumping on the rescue node so i've used my rescue node sessions i'm and i'm on the sync committee so lilac was not having a good day um that was a bad time to <laughs> to go down and using all the sessions so patches here said dm me your node address because i think he was sending out um quotes to people manually so what happened after that was here you know pretty quickly the the nethermind team um there was a screenshot shared from there so here um smart programmer i'm sorry if you can't see let me just choose change that um smart programmer said the team is looking into it it looks like there's a bug it doesn't look like something that can be fixed by the user so uh, the very early situation was that you know there's something definitely something going on and it's going to need a fix and um we're not sure exactly what that is right now so like i said you know this whole thing started at around um 125 yeah 125 right so let's keep that time in mind so this was like you know 20 minutes later they weren't sure what was going on and then you could see that um the rescue node you know every minute there was more and more people joining so um for those of you who are listening like you know really quickly we started getting like three four times the amount of people and then very quickly after that just a matter of minutes later like we'd gone from like three or four hundred validators on the rescue node up to over two thousand so it like spiked bigly and the number of nodes connected as well went up a lot um in fact let me see if there is um dashboard for that no i'm sorry i had it open later earlier but it's gone now sorry about that but um yeah this was like a, then a couple of hours later um you know at, um four o'clock and seven minutes eastern time um Fornax made um made a put a message in releases saying uh another support announcement wait sorry yeah saying uh another support announcement this time for nethermind users nethermind version 1.23 plus so anything newer than that um have an issue that leads to some node stop syncing with the chain um while the cause is still unclear we recommend everyone affected to enable um 
rescue node and to start testing again. After enabling the rescue node, users should wait a bit until the situation is clearer as Nethermind team announced they're working on the fix, which will be released in version 1.25.2. Uh, also, thanks to Ken for posting instructions how to fix your node here if you prefer to downgrade it immediately. So we got this from Ken saying that this is uh, best instructions for those who have the Nethermind bug and how you can um, get onto the rescue node and then you can downgrade your version and you should still you should be okay so uh, there were some workarounds that were kind of coming through quite quickly so ken you know at quarter past three um so like you know less than two hours later was the people already figuring out how to get around it now not long after that um Never mind. put out a hotfix. So here we had the hotfix uh, 1.25.2. Uh, so it says this hotfix hot addresses the consensus issue. Never mind. that was introduced in was 1.23.0. So this had actually been in there for quite a while. It just hadn't triggered. Um, it says this release is mandatory for all Nethermind node operators, node runners. No resync is required. Consensus client restart is required. No need to resync your consensus client. Version 1.21 and below were not affected. So that's what Ken was saying as well. If you went down to 1.21, then you were fine but um, anything newer than that and they were having issues so right away you know we we figured out that like to fix it like this was only a matter of hours later and then um they said the full postmortem will be coming so then we got this from uh, formax again saying and this was at um, five o'clock and 20 minutes so less than four hours later saying that my team released 1.25.2 which fixes the issue without requiring a resync and then please uh, follow these instructions manually to fix everything blah 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 and just saying that you know you need to restart your execution and consensus clients and then everything should be good so within four hours everything like the fix was out and everything was working in which is absolutely tremendous you know testament to the Nethermind team working on the sunday for all the people who spent time kind of um figuring things out earlier trying to find workarounds that was a tremendous effort so um, congratulations in a sense you know as much as it's horrible to be on the receiving end of um, an execution client going down like you know it's a pretty bad case scenario um this this was dealt with really well and um thankfully it wasn't too bad and since then we have had a new experimental release from nethermind so you know you don't have to upgrade this yet you can just wait for it to um for it to come through like properly but this is a pre-release so this was eight hours ago you know um around 20 hours after the issues saying this hotfix addresses the consensus issue and released in 1.23.0 no resync is required consensus client restart is required no need to resync your consensus client and that, that that was that version so they've been working quite hard on getting everything fixed and getting everything working properly as much as you can and that's wonderful so great job to the nethermind team there as well um and then after that what we have now is a new version of the smart node stack so for those of you who aren't comfortable updating your um execution client using um rocket pool um, service config then there is a new smart node stack available for you so formax here says today we released version 1.11.6 of the smart node um, it's a recommended update for nethermind and lodestar node operators due to the bug fixes and new features related to the updated clients so this was released like 21 hours after um, the issues happened with nethermind and then with client updates you know that there's another mind update there's also a lodestar update and then with uh, the smart node there are a couple of uh, changes here that work with nethermind as well so you can update to that if you are interested in it um and if, of course if you're on um if you're on nethermind then it makes a lot of sense for you to update to that um if you haven't put in the hotfix already and then as always just as there is an issue with the you know with us execution block uh, people in the rocky pool community um love their po apps so this time we had logic beach who put together this po app of a server kind of melting down this is nethermind fiasco 2024 rocket pool so this po app then went out to people who were in and around trading um around that time and i already claimed mine so something really funny happened where one of my nodes was um, running on bisu and that went down and then um the, here's the po app as well you can see uh the, the one that i've claimed um and it has been claimed by 28 people so um, that's nice it says on january 1st at um, 6 p.m utc the netherman client began syncing to the wrong chain rocket pooler supported one another using the rescue node and figuring out fallbacks to avoid missing those sweet attestations so that was really cool yeah um but yeah everyone like you know we were able to get this done really quickly which was 
which was really, really great. So um, thankfully, that was fantastic. Now, however, you know, um, I think the issues of the Nethermind, um, is the issues brought up with Nethermind, like going offline, um, really like hit home for certain people. And I think a whole lot of people um, kind of like jumped on this as a chance to uh, talk about issues that are really, really important in Ethereum. So Butter here had this meme saying, is it too early? Please switch away from Geth and save our ETH bags. So first there was the, you know, it's a Grim Reaper meme and the doors open. There was Parity, which is an old execution client that is, has been deprecated. And then Besu from two weeks ago had this issues. Nethermind, of course, had its issues yesterday. And then it's, um, you know, Grim Reaper death knocking on Geth's door. Um, and yeah but but in his post was like um an unhappy uh um, emoji with that and a lot of people like reacted to this and um they they um they, there's a lot of discussion that came up around this idea so now um, what what's the idea here so i retweeted it and i said please get the f off geth asap i have absolutely nothing against geth and they've been amazing so far but bad 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 things might happen if we don't fix the f up so i use really strong language and people responded really positive to this actually about um moving away from geth now um, a few people who obviously aren't thinking very clearly were saying why would you tell people to get off a client geth that is working fine and go on to clients like bisu or nethermind that have had bugs in the last couple of weeks like you know why would you do that right well here's the issue like your geth client might be running perfectly right but no one in the world is saying that any piece of software will always run perfectly forever like there is going to be a day when there is a bug in geth now the geth team like i said are fantastic they're amazing they've done excellent stuff so far you know there's a reason why um it's such a well well liked client because um, it gets the job done right like it's working really well and uh, it's got this lindy effect of you know a lot of people using it it's been working for a long time so people are going to carry on using it and they've and they've been using it the problem is if this bug or the bisu bug from a couple of weeks ago had happened in geth instead of happening in bisu and nethermind um bad 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 things would happen like i said right so if you are on nethermind or bisu you know those fixes were out within like three four five hours um you know you missed attestations you probably lost one dollar worth of um rewards in that time that's not nice right like that's not fun if you were away from your computer if you were traveling or something maybe you'd lose it for a few days i think each day you you have attestations worth between three and four dollars a day is for each validator so you know that that might add up that's not nice right it's not nice to experience that but what would happen if if this had happened to geth so here we have lily um a posting on this saying um no, sorry, Millie. <laughs> Millie posting on this thing. Dang, this is actually pretty scary. And it's the main reason I don't stake any ETH. Uh, raw ETH maxi for life. Saying this is pretty scary for central exchanges as well. But given they were likely to be able to mitigate quickly enough to cover any losses, given how well capitalized they are. So here, this is a post from um, Dankard. Um, Dankard Feist, who's an Ethereum researcher. And actually, let's have a look at what Dankard is saying. So he says, saying, Ethereum merge, run the majority client at your own peril. And this is from March 2022 so this has been an issue for quite a while and you know people have been aware of this for quite a while and he's not like saying specifically about geth he's just saying that if you are on a client that is a as a majority client then there is a risk that you are exposing yourself to that you don't have to expose yourself to so in the, like you know he talks about why we need multiple clients and what happens if there's a bug and how we can fix it and what all those issues are and there's the main area of this that i want to talk about is this um this section here right where he says um like how bad is it to run the majority client he says in order to understand what the dangers are let's take a look at three failure types one mass slashing event two mass offline event and three an invalid block event so um, an invalid block is what happened yesterday to never mind so let's just skip to that because it's the most serious of the three issues and let's see what dankard says about that here so um wait it's this right here so he says the buggy client has more than two thirds of the stake, which is what the current situation with Geth is. He says in this case, the buggy client would not just build chain A, it would actually have enough stake to finalize chain A. Now chain A is the one that has a bug in it. So the bug becomes the 
the main chain it becomes like what what ethereum is right so it says one of the conditions of finalization is that chain is valid and all other correctly operating clients chain a, to to all other operate correctly operating clients chain a would be invalid however due to the casper ffg protocol how it works when the valid validator finalizes chain a they can never take part in another chain that is in conflict with chain a without getting slashed unless that chain is finalized for anyone interested in the details here see appendix two so once chain a is finalized the valid is running the buggy client are in a terrible bind they have committed to chain a but chain a is um invalid they cannot contribute to chain b because it hasn't finalized yet even though the bug fix to their validator software won't even the bug fix to their validator software won't help them they have already sent the offending votes um what will happen now is very painful chain b which is not finalizing will go into the quadratic inactivity leak over several weeks the offending validators will leak their stake until enough has been lost so that b will finalize again let's say they started off with 70 percent of the stake they would lose 79 percent of their stake because of how much they would need to lose in order to represent less than one third of the total stake at this point chain b would finalize again and all stakers can switch to it the chain will be healthy again but the disruption will have lasted weeks and millions of ETH were destroyed in the process. So case three is catastrophic. So here having a supermajority client um, and there being a bug in that would be catastrophic. Now let's, uh, so you might think, right, like, okay, actually let's take it one step at a time. Now, if this was happened with Geth, then Geth currently has around 84% of the Ethereum blockchain is on Geth. If it was happened to Geth, um, those stakers would lose 80% of their stake in activity leak before they'd be able to finalize on the correct chain. Now you might be able to say, hey, like, you know, we have chain A, right? Like the, the faulty chain uh, that's finalized. Why don't we all just move to that? Well, first of all, that would involve punishing the people who did the right thing, which were, who were running the, the non-buggy, non, um, non, um, the non-buggy version of the software, right? Like, like Geth or Nethermind in this situation, um, because they'd be on the wrong fork. So then they would get slashed moving to the main chain or the, the faulty chain. You might also be able to say, hey, you know, the faulty chain will be fine. Like it might not, it might not be any issue. But what if the bug in there was something like an infinite mint, mint bug? That would just destroy Ethereum, right? Like that would mean that someone could just say, here's a uh, hundred billion um, new ETH. You know, the existing ETH amount was one hundred million, but now I've just mil minted billions of ETH out of, uh, of this bug. And you can't then say, oh, we're going to stick with this with this chain, right? Because that's obviously incorrect. So at that point bad 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 things will happen now this is the bad things that we're talking about like incredibly bad things would happen this would be an absolute catastrophe for ethereum it would be um an, the, there would there's nothing like it like the dow hack even bitcoins like hard fork that they had about their infinite mint um problem in 2013 i think or 2011 it was really early in bitcoin they had an issue they've made a hard fork fixed it the thing is like ethereum works with a multi-client architecture so this it's not as simple as just going back they'd, they'd have to that whatever the situation to fix it would would be really bad in one way or another um so the the only way to solve this is to not have a super majority buggy client that that's what it comes down to that's what Dankard is saying here now if we go on over here here um Sagar says ethereum has terrible client diversity here's a quick overview of the current landscape geth currently makes up a super majority of all nodes coinbase binance kraken are 100 using geth so these are some of the largest staking entities in ethereum they're all using geth um, lido's 76 percent geth uh, rocket pool and stakewise two of the more diverse staking protocols are around 42 percent geth use so that is you know perfectly like normal if that was geth overall but geth overall is not 42 percent; it's 84 percent. so that is uh, like still still bad like there, there'd be issues happening there as well so consensus clients are actually pretty well distributed with no single client having um uh, type having a significant majority critical issue in geth can lead to potential millions of eth being destroyed from validators running geth users who are staked in protocols that run geth would lose eth in this scenario to help prevent this zero day situation it's um, important for large um, staking programs to diversify their ETH clients, reducing Geth usage below two thirds stake would be a huge step in the right direction and prevent the doomsday scenario I mentioned above. Yeah, so this would this would be disastrous. And then the, the Saigar here links back to the Dankar article that we just read. Um, 
And then he also had a thread about client diversity a little while ago, saying about how bad Geth's position is. It's really bad. <laughs> Cliff notes. Um, here, so one of the one of Saiga mentioned uh, Coinbase, right? Having um, one hundred percent using Geth. So um, Will Robinson, I covered him a couple of weeks ago on on Rocket Fuel. You know, after the Basu incident, and he was saying that Coin he works for Coinbase and he's also a Rocket Pool node operator. So um, I tagged him saying, "Do you have any update on?" Um, on the Coinbase stuff is going. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to say or not, but if you can, um, so he uh, replied a little while later saying, we know uh, it's important and we're on it. Um, I don't have hard timelines to commit to today, which I know is frustrating, but I'm sure that this node operator heavy group in particular can empathize with the desire to be methodical when so much stake is in question. And yes, it's also not lost on us that having so many eggs in the majority client basket carries its own risks. We're doing our best to balance these. So that's what Will said. And then um, Jasper said, God forbid the worst was to transpire. Do you think Coinbase could legally be liable for losses? That's a whole separate discussion. I said, hey, Will, you're fine. It's just within two weeks, yeah, because two weeks ago it was Besu, today it was Nethermind, and <laughs> the idea that in two weeks' time it might be Geth, of course, that's really bad. And then Will um, said, you know, as a Nethermind operator in my off hours these days, this morning was spicy for me. Uh, same thoughts as many of you, I'm sure. Thank goodness for the rescue node. What happened? What? if this happened to Geth. So there's a lot of scary thoughts out there. And um, yeah, it was, it would not be, not be good. So it's nice that Will, you know, popped in here and like, you know, he's working with Coinbase and in their staking department, I guess I'm not exactly sure what he does. I know that he's a senior engineer, um, but I'm glad that they're trying to fix it. And I hope they do it as soon as possible. And this like lit a candle, <laughs> lit a fire under them basically. So yeah. And then there's Jasper here um, saying that um, every day more and more people see the light. Geth is good. Survival is better. The Rocket Pool Smart Node plus Rescue Node combo makes switching clients easy and cheap. PSA, if you do switch clients, make sure to use doppelganger protection. So here we had Meek saying finally being resynced on Nethermind and off. Yeah, um, being, finally being synced on Nethermind and off the Rescue Node feels like, and then it's a picture of the person from... Um, Shawshank Redemption, you know, the end where he's like found his redemption and is like in, in bliss. Uh, and he said, Be gone, Geth. So, uh, Meek, you know, he's a Rocket Pool node operator and he saw the light and he switched from um, Geth to um, to something else. So, wonderful. Um, yeah, he's resynced on Nethermind. So, great, great stuff, Meek. Now, this, this is the point that I was trying to make earlier, right? Like, if you are on Geth, Sorry, if you're on Nethermind or Bisu, right? Like you lost, you know, uh, $4 per validator. Maybe you have 100 validators. You lost $400, uh, $400, you know, for a whole day of inactivity. That's not nice, right? No one wants to lose $400. However, if you're using Geth, and if you were, if you were using Geth, you could potentially lose like hundreds of thousands of dollars for those 100 validators. Like the, the calculus just doesn't make sense. Like, I know there's this idea, right? Like, why would you tell someone to switch to a buggy client? Well, you switch to the buggy client because that will save you in case the client that you're on has a bug. So um, it just it's just a no brainer. Like the 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 cost of being on Geth, while it's a super majority, is way 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 too high for any rational actor to stay on Geth. So now, if you're on Geth, you're watching this show, and if you're on Geth, please don't use Geth anymore. Okay. So now I'm going to tell you how you can stop using Geth. The way you do it is you go to your node and once you are, you know, SSH'd into your node or if you're using your node directly, um, you will go to, um, oh, this page doesn't like my screen setup. Um, okay, so you will go to uh, your your client, your um, you know, SSH into your node and you type out this command, rocket pool node sign message dash M, rescue node um, and then date and then you copy that. When you go to your node and you paste this code into your node, you get an output that's like an open bracket address with your node information, message, rescue node, blah, 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 signature, 0x, blah, 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 version, whatever, blah, 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 and then a close bracket. You copy and paste that output from your, from your node machine, paste it into the rescue node, and press on I agree to the terms and conditions. Once you press I agree to the terms and conditions, you press request access. That will give you a username and password for um, the Rocket Pool Rescue node. Now, what do you do with that? With that information, you go to um, 
Rocket Pool, you, you go to this page uh, about changing clients and you read through this page. Now, this page will tell you about all about changing execution clients and it tells you how to do it and what the steps are. So um, you can you can back up you know, the execution database if you want, but you don't have to. All you do is go to Rocket Pool Service Config. In there, first you will go to add-ons, you'll go to rescue node, you will put in that username and password that you just got from the rescue node website. Then from there, you will go to ETH1 and you will change your uh, execution client where it's highlighted on the screen. The second tab down will say um, execution client. You will change that from Geth to Nethermind or Bisu, whichever one you prefer. And then you will um, tap escape out and then um, save review changes and, and exit out of uh, your smart node config. Then what will happen is that will reset your... Um, that will reset your uh, your geth and it will put you onto um, Bisu or Nethermind, whichever one you're using. And that's it. Um, that's all you need to do is so press enter to accept the changes. Now you're done. Your new execution client will begin syncing immediately. As usual, you can follow the Rocket Pool uh, logs, uh, service logs, ETH1. And then this will help you verify there's no errors. So um, that's it like that that's literally it's less than a 10 minute process and uh, then you'll be on the on the uh, rescue node so you're not going to miss any attestations while you're doing this while you're moving away from geth and also what will happen is you will then uh, be able to um once your sync is complete and you, you know you're on your new execution client everything's up to date um uh, never mind it takes six to 12 maybe 24 hours at most depending on your internet connection and what kind of um, hardware you're using um, then you can just go to uh, the service config again go to add-ons and turn off the uh, the rescue node when you don't need it because if you leave it on for 15 days and you don't turn it off then you'll start missing attestations because of that because yeah that's so that's not good so the whole process will take you 10 minutes on day one and then you know a day or two later to turn off the rescue node will take you another five or ten minutes at most so that's literally how easy the process is. So if you're watching this episode right now, and if you're running Geth on your machine, pause this, go sign into your machine and get off Geth right now. Go to Bisu, go to Nethermind, just don't stay on Geth anymore. Yeah, sure, you know, if you've only got a few validators, the impact that you will have on the network will, will not be huge. And, you know, we really need Coinbase, Binance, Kraken, Lido, those big, big operators to be doing this. Um, but... If there is a bug on Geth, then at least that means that you won't lose um, most of your ETH, um, as those guys will. You know, hopefully, if you're on Nethermind or BCU and they have another issue, it can be fixed within a day or two. You lose four, five, ten, twenty dollars instead of losing most of your ETH. So please, 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 um, switch away from Geth right now and go to something else. Okay. So uh, that was all the Geth drama and the post Geth stuff. Now we are going to talk about um, Eigenlayer. So I've been mentioning Eigenlayer a lot on Rocket Fuel recently because Jasper has put in a bounty application for the GMC to uh, get them to approve um, like kind of a, a software uh, bridge between. Um, an integration between Eigenlayer and, and Rocket Pool. Well, he wrote this paper called uh, Hybrid Theory that. Um, he talks about um, why, you know, embracing um, native staking plus pure staking is, is the way to go. So here in this in this draft, this is just a draft, it's not the final version. He'll still be making changes to this, I think, in the days and weeks to come. He says proof of stake, uh, delegated proof of stake, liquid staking, restaking, liquid restaking, eigenpods, native restaking, hybrid restaking. Leads words have caused confusion across crypto traders for the last several months and they actually continue for the foreseeable future as Eigenlayer marches towards mainnet launch in early 2024. It looks like in quote, quarter two maybe of 2024 about halfway through the year in this essay i'll attempt to redefine what i will read i will attempt to define what each term means and what their differences are i'll include a brief history of consensus the emergence of liquid staking the eigenlayer proposition and the various formulations of restaking i will further establish why rocket pool among all staking protocols is uniquely ready to partner with eigenlayer based on the idea of hybrid restaking where lst holders have senior debt and um LRT holders, which is liquid restaking tokens, have junior debt but a higher yield. Lastly, I'll make the case why Rocket Pool embracing Eigenlayer is good for Ethereum writ large. So, you know, he goes into um, the history of, of everything. 
and then the different definitions, the different terms that are there, and then he kind of um, explains uh, like a discussion showing um, like different charts that show um, who loses what if things go wrong, and uh, how you know it helps with Rocket Pool using hybrid restaking um, compared to um, you know the other ways that you could do it, and eigenpods and how all those work. And then he kind of explains why Rocket Pool and Eigenlayer together are a perfect match. So he says the winner of the world's reserve asset um, of the universal crypto money and the most liquid utilized token will not go um, will not go a liquid not go a liquid restake token. It's not even clear it will be an LST. It's funny if you ask crypto Twitter Degen what they care more about. Absolute yield is near the top of the list and risk adjusted return is at the bottom. The aforementioned battle for moneyness flips the Degen mentality on its head. Risk is the most important factor and LRT is likely to be actively managed by a DAO and volatile. These are not the traits you want as a reserve currency. We can see a real world example of this from the hesitation of centralized custodians to get involved in restaking so far. Inherent higher risk is a major sticking point with restaking tokens and then he kind of goes on to say together eigenlayer can recharge um supercharge the largest cohort of solo stakers on ethereum this um union will have will also drive more users to run their own nodes as they're tempted by the potential to earn ethereum staking rewards uh, our eth commission rpl rewards avs income and avs commission at the same time rocket pool will enable eigenlayer to offer new services to ethereum thereby improving its value proposition service like services like based pre-configurations shared sequences and oracle services will all increase the value of ethereum network this is ultimately the success of eigenlayer will depend on the economic realities of the services it enables if the avs's do not generate income streams then no number of nodes on the network will certainly make eigenlayer valuable or used how if however the avs's are in hot demand and services like shared rollups attract large mev flows then eigenlayer has the potential to seriously modulate the decentralization of the beacon chain in this world where eigenlayer is a serious player in ethereum proof of stake the world is better off having rocket pool as eigenlayer's major partner there absolutely exists a world where eigenlayer hoovers up all the stake and becomes too big to fail um, for ethereum by centralizing the hell out of stake into the hands of one or two players rocket pool can help prevent that bad outcome rocket pool cannot control the invisible hand of economics and it's possible that even if rocket pool is closely partnered with eigenlayer that eigenlayer ends up centralized however it seems to me that the best shot we have for decentralization decentralized and robust ethereum is when we have successfully integrated rocket pool within eigenlayer so this is just like a pitch for the bounty proposal that um, jasper put out then of course there was a huge discussion that came up in um, trading based around some of these ideas um like the getting into all those ideas is like beyond the scope of this video today i'm sorry because things have already <laughs> spoiled because of the nethermind stuff but you know, there was a really really good discussion that happened here and I think it was really fascinating that, you know, people were sharing the ideas and opinions and talking about just how um, Eigenlayer could work and whether it's vaporware, whether it's useful, whether it's, uh, you know, worth it to integrate with Eigenlayer and all that kind of stuff. Um, after that, what happened is, um, you know, the GMC is currently reviewing the bounties, grants and retroactive awards from this latest period. One of them, of course, is um, Jasper's... Um, eigenlayer integration so ken i guess is someone on the gmc who's kind of thinking about this quite a lot and he says help me understand this a bit more about the bounty proposal and your subsequent discussion on its merits and he says here's my understanding of eigenlayer and he just talks about how um you know you set your withdrawal credentials to eigenlayer and uh, then you can get slashed you know if you don't perform the service as well so then he's kind of talking about the different um ETH that's available by the different node operators, whether you're a solo staker or a rocket pool node operator, that act as a bond towards Eigenlayer. And then he uh, talked about his own ideas on what it might look like. Um, and then he had some questions. So he says, is my understanding correct in terms of how Eigenlayer is going to work? Is my understanding on how possible Eigenlayer integration with rocket pool node would be designed? If so, why is this bounty needed? Are we um, envisioning a mega pool if we're envisioning a mega pool world? So, um, Val kind of answered some questions and um, talked about, um, you know, about max capital efficiency for Rocket Pool itself. And this is, he says this will almost certainly reduce the relative value of Eigenlayer to Rocket Pool node operators. Uh, that said, if Eigenlayer sees value beyond that, I understand the desire to milk that too. I just think there are negatives, as I wrote above, from Eigenlayer's point of view. I'm not sure what's attractive about Rocket Pool, junior debt, and the rules might change. So here there's Kaido, who works with Eigenlayer, kind of talking about how uh, Eigenlayer would be willing to accept junior debt. So they would let the 
protocol take any um, you know uh, compensation for slashing or misbehavior first before eigenlayer had a chance to take what was left which is fascinating um, and very interesting position so you know the, the, it seems like they want this integration as well and then ken just kind of wanted to clarify some information there as well and had some more questions about junior debt and um you know how does that all work together and then um jasper then uh, asked, answered some questions as well so um you know if you're interested in this discussion definitely follow the links in the description and like read up on it all because it's really really fascinating about how this is all coming together and um I can't really say too much because of course this is a grant you know a bounty that's under consideration i'm the member of the gmc but um people are definitely thinking about this a lot and giving it really serious thought okay so talking about the gmc but not just the gmc but other committee members as well um a couple of months ago there was this discussion um actually um yeah from december about paying um members of the committees you know to attract uh more people to apply but also to um reward the work that people are putting in at the moment it's free um so patrick who works with um um who works with long for wisdom as with as part of gov alpha had some ideas on how we can put a system together to pay committee members so he says for some reason i can't edit my top level post in the thread following a break over the winter holidays the proposal now has been revised a new version will be found below so he says the main summary of the changes are uh change the hourly rate of people who work to about 30 dollars per hour uh, you know committee members remove token streaming component due to marginal gains and large increase in complexity moved more firmly in favor of co coordinate as the optimal solution for the committee's needs uh, based on public and private feedback um, various spelling grammar and syntax fixes added clarification that member does not necessarily receive the listed hourly rate and next steps updated so then um you can you can read the proposal here about basically how the pay might end up being about 300 about um an estimate of 15 to 20 hours per month which is about 450 to 600 dollars per month per member of the gmc it says this number will likely be lower for imc members since their estimated hours are lower so basically 30 dollars per hour and then um, talk about how they get paid in rpl and they get paid every month and it weighs every month to follow the price of rpl um, with those dollar amounts so there's there's some pros and cons here as well about incentivization commitment transparency but the cons being you know budget constraints complexity and value alignment and then people started um um giving their feedback on that as well so if this is something you're interested in definitely go and give some feedback here um and um find out what's going on with that okay next we've got this update from diva who have this vote that is currently ongoing and this is um you know currently the vote is very 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 strongly in favor yes 31 million votes yes 96,000 votes against and this is a launch early staker program powered by sommelier vaults now what is this it says um this is talking about you know uh diva improvement proposal he says that you know before they kind of did a vampire attack on lido um the rocket pool community reached out to them saying that hey you know it should be it would be cool if diva could do something together with rocket pool because it could be like a net neutral or a benefit for rocket pool so the idea is that this go proposal but this proposal outlines the intention of launching early staker program powered by sommelier and its associated terms and conditions which include token distribution details for the program participants the initial proposal of the early staker program was outlined in this first rfc and the initial proposal in the terms of conditions um outlined um in the second uh, rfc both rfcs were placed for a temp check and passed and then he says um you know the text below re-outlines the key provisions of those rfcs with particular emphasis on the terms of conditions the seven c's compensation component and the terms of conditions have been adjusted based on community feedback and we're proposing compensation structure in line with the latest comment in the second rfc so what is this exactly they said that i um enzyme pre-launch vaults have been successful at attracting around 45 million dollars of future div eat stakers however this initiative has been primarily focused on ETH and ST, ST ETH holders. Members of the Rocky Pool community interested in Diva expressed feelings of being left out as R ETH holders. An R ETH vault has been discussed, but the Diva community has been against an R ETH vault that would directly reduce Rocky Pool's TVL. A more synergist, a more synergistic approach is needed. So this is beyond targeting new user base. The vault will help bootstrap um, intelligence long-term and post-launch div eth liquidity which can be dynamically provided across the div eth ecosystem to support diva um, staking uh, dao goals and um, chain link oracle support so what is happening here is 
that they want to set up a vault that will um, have um, div basically it'll be an R ETH, ETH vault that v has a balancer vault already and you can bring that token then to a stake with um, with uh, div ETH and as the uh, div ETH comes online then that ETH in that will be swapped for div ETH and the liquidity will be carried on like that so um, this you know is very likely to go through and it's really interesting that those you know LST LST pairs are becoming more um, frequent now and our ETH seems to be you know the front of some of those with OS ETH and now div ETH as well um, is is really interesting so you can dig into the whole of the the vote here to find out what's going on but this is I think uh, really fascinating that um, this kind of thing is happening so it's definitely one to keep an eye on um, you know going going forward because I think um, there's um, there's a lot of value potentially here for um, for both protocols Okay, um, here there's a tweet by Laura Shin who says hardware wallet firm Trezor is investigating a security incident on January 17th in which 66,000 users may have had their contact details exposed. So um, it seems like um, Trezor, you know, sell their hardware wallets and I guess they've kept details of the people who buy the hardware wallets and that has been leaked. So that information is out in the open now. Um, this also happened to a ledger a partner sales partner um i forgot which platform it was that had the ledger sale details leaked as well and they you know bad things happened because of that people got fished people got um um you know mail targeted mailings and all sorts of things like email addresses um i think if I remember rightly, some people even got attacked, like wrench attacked based on the information that was on that list. So it's really bad. Um, so I really hope that, you know, you all take precautions against this. I don't know exactly how you would do that, but um, but this is, but this is really bad. So um, please, please stay safe. Okay, finally, we're going to end with this um, Patches news. So Patches went on the skiing trip. He's actually on the skiing trip right now. And here's a picture of Pat uh, Patches in his onesie. He said, I do ski in a onesie these days. So um, people kind of zoomed in on the picture and saw that Patches, his face was very much like um, Harold in the, in the emoji. You know, the... the uh the kind of awkward face emoji so um in rocket pool tradition whenever there's a face like this mav turned it into an actual emoji that you can use in the server and you can use that like just run the command please which is one of the sentences um patches says in support quite often <laughs> so <laughs> so that is now the face so there's a new emoji in the server if you want to use it it's patches his face being like like that so uh, on that note i'm going to end today's mega episode please 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 if you are on geth get off geth please move to bisu or nethermind you know you might lose one or two days of um of rewards of attestation rewards or proposal rewards if you um if you if there's another bug but you won't get in a really 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 bad situation so please 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 go right now get off geth and fix this up because it's really bad if you do do that like if you do get off geth because of watching rocket fuel today please send me a message somehow like on youtube on twitter on a discord and just tell me that you did that and then tomorrow i'll give a shout out to all the people who um, got off geth because of rocket fuel today and i think that would be really cool for everyone so thanks all for watching listening and being part of the rocket fuel community um i hope you all had a good weekend although those of you on nethermind might have had a spicy one as will did but um Thanks all, and I'll be back tomorrow. So uh, see you then. Bye.